In our fourth lecture on linear algebra, we're going to be looking at multiplicative inverses of matrices and matrix equations. And what I hope to get through on this lecture is to find the multiplicative inverse of a square matrix, which is a fairly simple process, and then use inverses to solve matrix equations, and then possibly be able to look at some applications. These are pretty long problems when we get beyond a square matrix, but they are pretty interesting and fun to work with. So first of all, we want to talk about what a multiplicati multiplicative identity is in terms of a real number, and then talk about what a multiplicative identity is in terms of a matrix. Well, we already know something about multiplicative inverses. If we take some number times 1, I will just get that number back. So 1 is called the multiplicative identity. Now this is in terms of just real numbers. Now this is also true whether we take a times 1 or 1 times a. Now what we're wondering about then, is there a similar property for matrix multiplication? Uh, that is, is there some matrix i such that if we take matrix a times matrix i, that I'll get matrix a back, and that it will also work in the other direction. If I have the multiplicative identity matrix, which we'll call i, times matrix a, that I'll get matrix a back. And the answer is yes. Uh, a square matrix with ones down the main diagonal from the upper left to the lower right and zeros everywhere else does not change the elements in a matrix and products with that matrix. So this is with a two by two matrix. So let's go ahead and look at a quick example. Let's look at the matrix one, two, three, four. And again, we want to find what that multiplica multiplicative identity matrix is, the I. And what we hope is, is that I'll get the original matrix right back, one, two, three, four. Well, what we said was for a square matrix, in this case a two by two matrix, the answer is yes, this identity matrix will have a one on the diagonals and zero everywhere else. So I want to know, is this a true statement? Well, let's go ahead and take this piece right here and actually multiply it out. Now, if you remember from our last lecture, we talked about multi uh, matrix multiplication. Well, here we have a two by two matrix times a two by two matrix. The number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix, so I should be able to multiply these. And my resultant matrix will be two by two. So I take one times one, which is one, plus two times zero, which is zero. One plus zero is one. So I do get that upper one in my top left-hand corner. Next, I'll take one times zero, which is zero, 2 times 1, which is 2, 0 plus um, 2 is 2. And if you go through and do the same thing, 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 0 is 0, 3 plus 0 is 3, and down here in this corner, you'll see that I do get this. So this is a true statement. Now I also need to check the other direction. So I already checked this piece, basically a times i equals a. Now I want to take my identity matrix times my original matrix to see if I get that original matrix back. So in this one I'm checking to see if I get one, two, three, four back as well. So in this case I'm checking I, which is the identity matrix times A, to see if that equals A. So let's go ahead and see if this one's true. So two by two, two by two, number of columns in the first is equal to the number of the rows in the second. My answer matrix, or my solution matrix, should be two by two. Let's go ahead and check it out and see if that'll work. One times one is one. Zero times three is zero. One plus zero is one. One times two is two. Zero times four is zero. Two plus zero is two. And then if you finish this off, you'll get one, two, three, four as well. And so these are equal, so it is true that your identity matrix times your original matrix is just equal to your original matrix back. So we have this for a two by two square matrix. As it turns out, this will be true for any n by n square matrix with ones down the main diagonal from the upper left to the lower right and zeros everywhere else will be called the multiplicative identity matrix of order n. Okay, so this multiplicative identity matrix is of order two because it's a two by two matrix. So one way that we could write that is I2 identity matrix of order two would look like this. We could have I4 would be an identity matrix of the fourth order, which means it's a four by four. 
This is 4 by 4 with 1's down the diagonal and 0 everywhere else. So these are what we're talking about when we talk about the multiplicative identity matrix. Now we know what the multiplicative identity matrix is. The next question is, how do we find the multiplicative inverse of a matrix? Now this process is not so easy. Of course, when we're using a square matrix, it'll be pretty easy. But before we talk about that, let's back up a little bit and talk about what is the multiplicative identity or the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. So, for instance, if we have some real number A and we multiply it by 1 over A, I get 1 back. So what we're talking about here is the multiplicative inverse. Now, this also goes this direction, 1 over a times a is equal to 1 as well. So, the multiplicative inverse of a is 1 over a. The multiplicative inverse of 1 over a is a. So, we want to be able to talk about this with square matrices, not just in terms of real numbers, but in terms of square matrices. So, first of all, let's go ahead and look at the definition of the multiplicative inverse of a square matrix. So, the important pieces of this definition are we have some matrix that's n by n, which means it's squared. So let A be an n by n matrix. If there exists another n by n matrix, A inverse, and we note this A inverse, such that A matrix times the inverse of A is equal to the identity matrix of order n, I sub n, and other direction, the commutative portion of this, A inverse of A is equal to I, and we should have an n here. Okay, then A inverse is the multiplicative inverse of A. Now a couple things here. You have to show both A inverse times A and A times A inverse is equal to the identity matrix of order N. Now remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. So for matrix multiplication, AB does not automatically equal BA, and that's why I need to establish both of these cases. So it's always important that we do that. So for this example, let's go ahead and look at two matrices and let's show that one is the multiplicative inverse of the other. So let's show that B is the multiplicative inverse of A. Now remember, we have to show this both ways. Now A in this particular case will be a nice 2 by 2 matrix, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5. And B will equal 5, 3, 2, 1, going across. Now once we've established that B is the multiplicative inverse of A, I could redote this as A inverse. Now if we want to show that B is the multiplica multiplicative inverse of A, we must find the product AB and BA. If both of those products is equal to the identity matrix of order n, in this case um, we have to figure out what that order is, should be 2 by 2, then one is the inverse of the other. So let's go ahead and check it out. First of all, let's go start with AB. AB, so we have negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5, times B, 5, 3, 2, 1. Now A is a 2 by 2, B is a 2 by 2, number of columns in the first is equal to the number of rows in the second, so I can perform my, uh, matrix multiplication here, and my solution matrix will be 2 by 2 as well. Now my hope is, is there's going to be 1 on the diagonals and zeros everybody everywhere else. So we take negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, 3 times 2 is 6, negative 5 plus 6 is 1. So, so far so good. Uh, let's find the top right element, negative 1, times 3 is negative 3, 3 times 1 is 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Let's go ahead and find the bottom left element next. Uh, for bottom left, 2 times 5 is 10, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, so negative 10 plus 10 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, 6 minus 5 is 1. So this is equal to the identity matrix, in this case it's I2, identity matrix of order 2, but we're not done yet. I also need to check for BA. Remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. I can't assume 
that AB is equal to BA. It could be, but it's not guaranteed that it will be like it would be with real numbers. So again, here we're trying to show, we hope that this is true, that we have equality here, that this will give me the I2 matrix as well. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, 3 times 2 is 6, negative 5 plus 6 is 1. 5 times 3 is 15, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, 15 minus 15 is 0. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 1 times 2 is 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, 6 minus 5 is 1. And this is also equal to I2, the identity matrix. Uh, because both products give the multiplicative identity matrix, B is the multiplicative of inverse of A. So therefore, B is equal to the multiplicative inverse of A. And there we have 5, 3, 2, 1. And we could also say B, or A is the multiplicative inverse of B as well. Now the next thing we want to do is to say, okay, now well we've shown in this example, given these two matrices, I know how to check to see if they're multiplicative inverses. But the next thing is, is if I was given A, could I figure out what B should be in order to produce that multiplicative inverse? And that is not so easy to answer. Uh, for the case where we have square matrices, it's not too bad. But once we get beyond that, it gets to be a little bit more difficult. Now we're going to look first of all at one method for finding the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. This is kind of a long method, uh, but we definitely have all the tools that we need to do this method. Now this method that we're going to be looking at for finding the multiplicative inverse of a matrix is to begin by denoting the elements of the inverse matrix with variables. So we might be given, and we'll work this in example as well as we work along and define the process, we might be given a matrix, and we'll say it's 2, 1, 5, 3 for a change. Okay, so here's a matrix 2, 1, 5, 3. I'm going to call this matrix A. Now I know that I want to go through and I want to find the inverse of this matrix. So I'm also going to define the inverse matrix, and I'm going to denote this inverse matrix by defining some variables, W, X, Y, Z. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to find these variables, W, X, Y, Z, that will make it true such that the product is equal to the identity matrix of order 2. So we're going to begin with matrix A, denote the elements of the inverse matrix to be some variables, and then we're going to use the equation A times A inverse is equal to the identity matrix, in this case of order 2, generically of order n. Then we can find a value for each element in the multiplicative inverse matrix that is represented by a variable. So let's go ahead and see how this is done in this example. And again, these are long problems and there's a lot to keep track of, but they're not difficult. So again, matrix A, matrix, uh, this in this case would be the inverse of A. So what we're going to do, we're going to take A times A inverse, and we know that we're going to get the identity matrix like we have written above. So we're going to have 2, 1, 5, 3 times W, X, Y, Z. And we know we're going to get the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. And what we want to do then is we actually want to do the work here. We're going to multiply out the left hand side, equate it to the right hand side, have a system of equations and kind of work from there. So our first step is to actually multiply this left hand side out. So if we do that, we'll get 2w plus y in the top left-hand corner of my 2 by 2 solutions matrix for the left. Again, this is equal to my 2 by 2 identity matrix. Okay, next we have 2x plus z, 5w plus 3y, and then we'll have 5x plus 3z. So if this were actually true, I should be able to equate these terms or these elements of these matrices. So I have 2w plus y equals 1. I have 2x plus z then would have to equal 0. 5y plus 3y would equal 0. 5x plus 3z equals 1. So now I have a system of equations. 
Uh, this should look pretty familiar since we have systems of equations. And when we're working with this, I could put these back into probably w, x, y, z. I'd have four variables, so I have four equations. So I could set this up into an augmented matrix if we wanted. And we could work from there to solve what was going on here. Or I can kind of use the good old-fashioned uh, solving equations using your algebraic techniques with elimination or substitution. And I'm going to use the good old algebraic techniques. So first of all, I'm going to start with the left-hand side here with this system of equations. So I'm going to end up with 2w plus y equal 1 and 5w plus 3y equals 0. And what I want to do is I want to solve for probably w first and then y. And the way I'll do this is I'll multiply my top one by a negative 3. And this equation on the bottom will be no change because I want to eliminate the y's. So I'll have negative 6w minus 3y equal negative 3. 5w plus 3y equals 0. Uh, negative 6w plus 5w is negative w. Uh, negative 3y plus 3y is 0 equals negative 3 or w equals 3. So w equals 3. Now if I want to figure out what y equals, I can substitute w uh, into any of these equations up here. I think I'll back substitute w equal 3 into this equation. And if I do that, I have 6 plus y equal 1 or y equal negative 5. So now I have two values here that I've already found. Next I'm going to use the two equations 2x plus z equals 0 and 5x plus 3z equals 1. I think on the top one we'll multiply by negative 3. Bottom one will be no change. Rewriting I have a negative 6x minus 3z equals 0. And of course the bottom was no change. 5x plus 3z equals 1. So I have a negative x equal 1 or x is equal to a negative 1. Then I can take this x equal negative 1 and back substitute it in anywhere I want. I'm just going to plug it in here. If I plug in x equal negative 1, I get a negative 2 plus z equals 0. Uh, add the 2 across and I get z equal 2. So here's my four unknowns solved for. So I ended up with w equal 3, x equal negative 1, y equal negative 5, z equal 2. So putting that back into my A inverse matrix, remember my A inverse matrix was W, X, Y, Z, I have 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2. So that's my inverse matrix. So A times A inverse would equal A2 in this particular case. And so you can go through and verify this and check that as well. Now, quick point here, and this is our solution by the way. Okay, quick point. This is an important thing to note. First of all, only square matrices, and we'll say, since we know they're square, we know that they have the same rows and columns, but a lot of times we say of order n by n, have multiplicative inverses. However, there's another interesting note that we should include here and keep this one in mind. Not every square matrix possesses a multiplicative inverse. So if a matrix has a multiplicative inverse, it has to be a square matrix. However, not every square matrix has a multiplicative inverse. Now let's go over a few other interesting notes here as well. When we're talking about a square matrix having a multiplicative inverse, 
there's some definitions that we need to talk about here. First of all, let's look at invertible. Whoops, better spell that right. Invertible or non-singular. These definitions are interchangeable. If a square matrix has a multiplicative inverse, then it's said to be invertible or non-singular. So an invertible matrix or a non-singular matrix is a square matrix that has an inverse. Okay, now if a square matrix has no multiplicative inverse, it's called singular. So singular is a square matrix that does not have a multiplicative inverse. So that's some important terminology because pretty soon when we start talking about these things and we won't say it has an inverse or it doesn't, we'll just say it's singular or non-singular or invertible. Another couple quick things to note, if a square matrix has a multiplicative inverse that we're like we're talking about here, that inverse is unique. So we need to make sure that we note that this is unique. So those are some interesting and important to remember facts about matrices, square matrices, and whether they have an inverse or not. Now, let's look at a quick example, and I'm going to leave you to do the particulars on this, the work, but I want to give you an example of a matrix that does not have an inverse. So let's go ahead and look at the matrix A. We have negative 6, 4, negative 3, 2, and I want you to find a inverse if possible. Well, I already kind of indicated that it doesn't have an inverse, so we'll kind of fi figure out why it doesn't have an inverse here. We'd go through the same procedure. We'd say A times A inverse would equal I, in this case of order 2. So this would be negative 6, 4, negative 3, 2 times A inverse, which we'll just call W, X, Y, Z for elements right now. And this would be equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Now when we set this up and we go through and we perform the matrix multiplication on the left, we would end up with a negative 6w plus 4y in my top left element. Moving across I'd have a negative 6x plus 4z in my top right, negative 3x plus 2y, and a negative 3, I'm sorry that's not an x. Let's fix that. That would be a negative 3w plus 2y and a negative 3x plus 2z equals 1, 0, 0, 1. Now I want, we want you to finish through with this. You know, find your systems of equations, uh, negative 6w plus 4y equal 1, just like the one we did up on top. And what ends up happening after you do the multiplying matrices on the left and equating corresponding elements on the right, you, what you end up with is an inconsistent system with no solutions. Now with, remember with an inconsistent system, that means basically you cannot put this in a nice row echelon form. So we'll end with an inconsistent system with no solutions which means no solutions. All inconsistent systems have no solutions. Um, this shows that the matrix A does not have a multiplicative inverse. So sometimes you'll be asked to find the inverse of a matrix. You'll go through this process and you'll see that um, you know, it doesn't have a multiplicative inverse because 
I have uh, an inconsistent system that won't work. Now up above here when we started way back when we said we are looking at one method for finding the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. Let's go ahead and look at finding another method and this one we'll call a quick method because that last method got a little bit long. So let's look at a quick method for finding the multiplicative inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now the method that we used up above can be used any time. Um, it's just a little bit longer and this quick method only works for 2 by 2 matrices. The method we used up above could be used for any square matrix but you can see that those can get a little bit long. So let's go ahead and look at the quick method and this is a shortcut rule that you could develop using the method up above. So if we have some matrix we'll say with elements A, B, C, D moving across in rows then A inverse is going to equal 1 over AD minus BC times D negative B negative C A. So this is a formula and again this formula can be developed by using a generic A, B, C, D for your original matrix like we were working with up above. So general formula if you need to know this on a test or a quiz I'll give it to you and you don't need to memorize it. Now other quick note the matrix A is invertible, meaning it has an inverse. Whoops, I'm missing some values here. Well, apparently that L is not going to stay, so we'll skip it. So the matrix A is invertible if and only if, and the two F's mean if and only if, Looks like we're running into some pin issues here. Okay, I think I have the inking problems taken care of. So the matrix A is invertible if and only if AD minus BC is not equal to zero. If AD minus BC equals zero, then of course we're dividing through by zero. And that's not good. So if AD minus BC equals zero, then A does not have a multiplicative inverse. Now, the formula up above, again, we can establish by just using the methods like we did in our previous problem, but let's look at this AD minus BC. AD minus BC. So you're taking a product and subtracting the diagonals. And then what ends up happening is you swap the A and D and then you swap the B and C, but when you swap the BC you negate the values. So again, it's not a formula that I'll have you memorize, um, but it's kind of good to see the patterns that are in there. So let's go ahead and look at an example using this quick method. So again, you can use either method you want. Quick method's kind of nice. So find the multiplicative inverse of the matrix A, which equals negative 1, negative 2, 3, 4. Now, let's go ahead and think of these elements. These elements are A, B, C, and D. So element A is negative 1, element B is negative 2, element C is 3, and element D is 4. So to find the multiplicative inverse, first of all we should see if there is one. So let's check and see what AD minus BC is equal to. So again, that's our diagonal. AD would be negative 1 times 4 minus BC, which would be a negative 2 times 3. So that's going to be a negative 4 plus, in this particular case, 6, which is 2. 2 does not equal 0. Therefore, A has an inverse, a multiplicative inverse. Okay, so let's find out what that inverse is. So A inverse is equal to 1 over AD minus BC. Okay, and we're just following from this formula right up here. DA swap, BC swap, and negated. 
Well, we already figured out what AD minus BC was. That was 2 from right up here. Now let's look at and see what happens with our elements. A and D swap, so I have a 4 and a negative 1. B and C swap, and they're negated. So B was already a negative 2, but now I negate it. So let's go ahead and look at A inverse again. So I have a 1 half out front, 4, negative 3, 2, negative 1. And then I can distribute through that 1 half, and I end up with 2, negative 3 halves, 1 half times 2 is 1, and negative 1 half. This is A inverse. Now if you want to, you can check it by taking A times A inverse, and you should get the identity matrix of order 2, and you should also check both directions because matrix multiplication does not hold with the commutative property. A inverse times A should be the identity matrix of order 2 as well. So you can verify that. You could do that and check it. Okay, we talked about 2 by 2 matrices. Let's go ahead and look at finding multiplicative inverses of n by n matrices, n greater than 2, meaning 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5. And once you see this process, you're going to think, well, wowzer, this is pretty involved, and it is. You're right. So to find the multiplicative inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix uh, is where we're going to start. And we're going to assume that it's invertible. We, get, we begin by denoting that whole thing again, A inverse. A times A inverse is equal to I3 in this case, because we're going to look at a, a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's go ahead and start with the matrix negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 5, 0, and 0, 1, negative 3. So again, this is the matrix A that we're starting with, so A. Now we want to multiply this by A inverse, and we want to be able to get back our identity matrix. Okay, now, instead of using elements here like W, X, Y, Z, we need nine elements. So a lot of times what happens is we just use X's for the first row, Y's for the second row, subscripts of course, and Z's for the third row. And then we multiply this out and we find our system of equations. So when we multiply this out, we get negative X1 minus Y1 minus Z2 for my first element. Uh, for my next element that we'd be looking at, we take 4x1 okay, plus 5y1 plus 0 in this particular case, z1, and then 0x1 plus y1 okay, minus 3z1. And that's going to be the first column of this product matrix. Okay, now you're going to do the same thing now with 4. So you're going to have 4x2 plus 5y2 plus 0z2. So that's 4, 5, 0, x1, y1, z1, or sorry, uh, we already did that one, uh, x2, y2, z2. Okay, let's try this again. Whoops, that's not the eraser. Okay, so let's try this again. Now, for this next column, we're going to take negative x1, negative y1, or sorry, negative x2, negative y2, negative z2 will be in this first spot. Okay, and then we'll have 4x2 plus 5y2 plus 0z2, and then we'll go ahead and fill in the matrix from here. Okay, then when you get fill in, done filling in the matrices, you can start equating your coefficients. So, or equating your um, elements of your matrices. So, negative x1 minus y1 minus z2 would equal 1. 4x1 plus 5, and this is a y1 here, plus 0z1 would equal 0. 0x1 plus y1 minus 3z1 would equal 0. Now if you notice, if you look down these columns, my coefficients go negative 1, 4, 0, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 1, 5, 1, negative 1, 5, 1, etc. So the coefficients match on all of these. 
and that's an interesting characteristic that you can count on in this particular case. Now what we can do then is you write out all the corresponding systems of equations. So you're going to have basically three systems of linear equations. So for this first one, negative x1 minus y1 um, minus z1 would equal 1. 4x1 plus 5y1 plus 0z1, I'm just going to put that in as a placeholder, equals 0. 0x1 plus y1 minus 3z1 would equal 0. So there's one system. And then you'll do the same thing for the next two systems. So here's our three equations, and we have three complete systems. Now notice that the variables on the left of the equal signs, like we talked about before, have the same coefficients in each system. So what we can do is we can use Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve all three systems at once, because all these coefficients are the same. So let's go ahead and set that up to see what it would look like. So we're going to want to form an augmented matrix of those coefficients, so that would be negative 1, 4, 0, and again I'm pulling these coefficients from any of these linear systems, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 1, 5, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 3, augmented matrix. Now with the augmented matrix, I'm not going to just consider this first system, 1, 0, 0, I'm going to consider 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1 as well. So my augmented matrix is more than just a column on the right like I'm used to. Now, on the left here I have the coefficients of the three systems, and on the right I have the constants on the right in each of the three systems that we're looking at. Now to solve all three of these systems using Gauss-Jordan elimination, we need to obtain basically 1, 1, 1 on the diagonal, 0 everywhere else on to the left of the vertical line. We're going to use matrix row operations working one column at a time to obtain 1 in this required position, then obtain zeros in all of the other um, positions as well. So I'm going to kind of jump through some of those steps because we can certainly do row operations. And what we end up with after this process, so I'm going to do go through the process of Gauss-Jordan here. And again that's just a series of row operations and I'll let you go through and verify those. We will end up with 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, just like we want, but the right hand changes then. The right hand changes because as I'm getting the left hand side into Gauss-Jordan, the right hand is also multiplied, added, etc. using our row operations. So this is what I end up with for the right hand side. Now this augmented matrix provides the solutions to the three systems of equations. And so let's go ahead and look to see what they are given by. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Augmented matrix, first of all, is 15, negative 12, and negative 4. So that's one system. The second system, same matrix bit on the left. And on the right I have 4, negative 3, negative 1. Third one, negative 5, 4, 1. So let's look to see what's going on here. Now remember this first system I was using x1, y1, and z1 in my variable positions. So this tells me that x1 is equal to 15, y1 is equal to a negative 12, and z1 is equal to negative 4. This one is my x2, y2, z2. So x2 would equal 4, y2 would equal negative 3, z2 would equal negative 1, x3 is negative 5, y3 was 4, and z3 is 1. So now I have values for those nine variables that I was looking at. Holy cow, yowzer, we're not quite done. Now remember what we said A inverse was. A inverse was x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3, z1, z2, z3. So now we just plug in our variables. We have 15, 4, negative 5, negative 12, negative 3, 4, negative 4, negative 1, 1. So this is my inverse matrix. 
Now, this kind of looks familiar. Uh, let's take a le second look at this matrix and let's compare it to this matrix that we obtained up here. Hmm. After we did Gauss-Jordan, if you notice, this is the identical augmented portion on the right-hand side as we have down here. So this is something that we can count on. We can stop at this point and go through and find our solutions here. So again, notice that the 3 by 3 matrix to the right of the vertical bar here in my augmented matrix is the multiplicative, multiplicative inverse of A. And again, also notice that the multiplicative, multiplicative identity I3 is the matrix that appears to the left of the vertical bar, and that's over here. So here's our identity matrix on the left, here's my inverse on the right. So as soon as you go through that Gauss-Jordan elimination, you have your inverse matrix. Now again, please note that you can verify this by taking A inverse, and I better get the identity matrix of, matrix of order 3, and um, let's not go I here, let's go A inverse A would equal I3 as well. So you can go through and verify that. Okay, next we're going to look at using um, systems of, or sorry, solving systems of equations using multiplicative inverses of matrices. So to start off with here, we have matrix multiplication can be used to represent a system of linear equations. So here we have a system of linear equations, and I can represent this system of linear equations with matrix multiplication. I can take this 3 by 3 matrix, which is called our coefficient matrix, times this matrix right here, which is called my variable matrix, and here I have my constant matrix. So if I want to, I could abbreviate this A, matrix A, x equal b. And then, basically, we want to solve the matrix equation ax equal b. So the matrix equation ax equal b, and again, a, x, and b are all matrices, can be solved if a inverse exists. Now remember, not all square matrices have an inverse, but if they do have one, it's a unique inverse. So our steps would be, starting with the matrix equation, AX equal B. Then what we do is we take each side times the inverse matrix. Now order matters here. Remember, matrices cannot be multiplied in this any order. So if you notice on the left hand side, I take A inverse times A times X. So on the right, I need to take A inverse times B. If I move A inverse over here to the right, that changes the whole game. So just like we do with real numbers, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. But when we're working with matrices, I also have to remember the position of where I'm multiplying. So multiply both sides by A inverse. And again, because matrix multiplication is not commutative, put A inverse in the same left position on both sides. And then this A inverse times A would be the identity matrix of order N times X is equal to A inverse times B, which is our constant matrix from up here. The identity matrix times X by its definition will give us X. So X would equal A inverse B. Now we can see here then if AX equal B, then X is equal to A inverse of B providing, of course, that A inverse exists. Now, if AX equal B has a unique solution, then X equal A inverse of B. To solve a linear system of equations, basically multiply A inverse and B to find X. And that's, again, again assuming that they exist. Now, let's go ahead and look at a quick example here. So for this example, uh, solve the system. Now, of course, we have a lot of ways to solve systems now. But we want to solve this system by using the inverse, A inverse, which is the inverse of the coefficient matrix. OK, so let's go ahead and start with our system. Our system here, our first equation is x minus y plus z equal 2, minus 2y plus z equal 2, and minus 2x 
minus 3y uh, equals 1 half. So this looks familiar. We should be able to write out our coefficient matrix. 1, 0, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 1, 1, 0. That's my coefficient matrix. I have my variable matrix, x, y, z. And again, if you went through and performed your matrix multiplication, you'd have 1 times x minus 1 times y plus 1 times z. So that gives you this left-hand side here. And then I have my constant matrix, which would be 2, 2, 1 half. Okay, so here I have my linear system, AX equal B. The solution is given by X equal A inverse of B. Now the only thing we need to do to solve this then is to find A inverse. Now we're going to have to go backward a little bit here and uh, go through and find A inverse to find our solution. Okay, this is going to end up being a pretty long problem. So now we need to find A inverse. Okay, let's go ahead and start with A again. Let's go ahead and write out A. Okay, now next we want to write out um, the augmented matrix. So augmented matrix, I repeat everything on the left. On the right, basically, I want the identity matrix. Now what we'll want to do here is perform row operations on this left-hand side until I get it in um, a Gauss-Jordan form, 1, 1, 1 on the diagonals, zeros everywhere else. So I think the first thing that we could do, and remember the right hand side can do whatever it's going to do, the left hand side is what I want to get in that Gauss-Jordan form. So I think um, what we could do is start by replacing row 3 by 2 times row 1 and adding it to R3. So when we take 2 times row 2 and we add it to R3, we end up not changing row 1 or row 2. It's only the entire row 3, both on the right and the left hand side, that we need to be worried about. I think the next thing that we could look at here then is to take, um, get a 1 here in this position. So we could take row 2 times a negative 1 half. So negative 1 half times row 2. And let's see what that will yield. So when we multiply negative one-half times row two, row one and row three don't change, and just my coefficients change here. Uh, let's do two steps on this one. Let's take one times row two and add it to row one. And then also let's take um, five times row two and add it to row three. So we'll do that double step. So we have quite a bit changing here. In fact, I think every row, um, we take row 2 plus row 1, and we take 5 times row 2 plus row 3, we end up changing um, everything here quite a bit. So make sure you double check through these um, row operations to make sure there's no mistakes here. Now what we want to do is we want to get a 1 in this pivot point, so we'll take negative 2 times R3. Okay, and then we'll do another double step here. Um, let's replace row 1 by taking negative 1 half times row 3 and adding it to row 1. And then also let's do another 1 half row 3, positive 1 half row 3 this time and adding it to row 2. And hopefully this will get us into that Gauss-Jordan form and I think it will. Now because the left hand side here we have this in their Gauss-Jordan form, this piece right here is the multiplicative inverse of A. So A inverse is equal to the matrix 3, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, and negative 4, 5, negative 2. Now I almost forget what we are up to because we started this problem so long ago. But recall we are looking at a solution for the matrix X. So we said X way up here was equal to A inverse times B. So A inverse times B. 
Well, we know a inverse now. 3, negative 2, negative 4, negative 3, 2, 5, and 1, negative 1, negative 2. And b, I have to go clear up here to find b. And b was this coefficient matrix 2, 2, 1 half. 2, 2, 1 half. Okay, so before we perform our matrix operation on this, let's have a look. This is 3 by 3. This matrix is 3 by 1. So the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So I can indeed perform matrix multiplication here. And my solution matrix will be 3 by 1. So 3 by 1 will be my solution matrix. So in this first position, I'll have 3 times 2, negative 3 times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, minus 6 is 0, 1 times 1 half is a positive 1 half. So that will be the first element in my solution matrix. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to multiply this second row times this column. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 2 times 2 is positive 4. Those sum to 0. Negative 1 times 1 half is a negative 1 half. Let me write that a little better. 1 half, negative 1 half. And for our last entry, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. Negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1. Negative, I'm sorry, where are we at? 2 minus 1 is 1 here. So this is my solution. So the solution to that system is x equal 1 half, y equal negative 1 half, and z equal 1. And that's my solution set. Or you could write it 1 half, negative 1 half, 1. Now remember, this is the solution to this system of equations using the a inverse. So we have quite a few ways to solve these systems. We could um, put it in an augmented matrix form and use Gaussian elimination. We could do Gauss-Jordan. Uh, we could actually write out systems of equations and solve them algebraically. And now we can also solve the system using the inverse notation, the A inverse notation. And of course, if the inverse doesn't exist, then uh, that's probably not going to work so well. So the inverse must exist. Okay, that kind of wraps up this lecture. And remember, we were looking at multiplicative inverses of matrices and some matrix equations. And hopefully we'll be able to have some time in class to work on some applications of this when it comes to uh, coding matrices.